No, pretty much like we have the whole season. Uh, guys that have been ready to play and deserve to play have been playing. There's been a lot of those, um, but we're not gonna we're not gonna force feed anything. It, 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 we're gonna play the guys that are ready to play and deserve to play, and that's still quite a few young guys. Like Sam, you got something on this week's game? Go ahead. Sorry about that. Here's my video. It's back. Good. Okay. Um, when are you guys leaving for the game? Are you are you flying into the snowstorm? Are you waiting to leave on Friday? No, we're a little bit concerned about that. Uh, I think we leave around one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It's a long flight out there. Um, we got to see when this storms uh, pass through. And um, all I know is what I've read on the internet. But it's supposed to be a big storm, so hopefully the airport's open and everything goes well. Cool. I'll save my recruiting questions for later. Uh, looks like one more from Parker on uh, uh, on this week's game. Go ahead, Parker. Uh, Scott, not not on the game specifically, but um, Tate Wildman had put something on on social media about looked like he was in the hospital. Did he have a surgery? And, and what can you say about a guy like that who's who's dealt with obviously multiple injuries so far in his career? Yeah. Uh, he, he, we still feel like Tate has a bright future. Tate played a little bit for us early in the year, um, was really coming on, just hasn't been healthy. Uh, you know, sometimes that keeps recurring. Sometimes the guy just has some bad luck at the beginning of his career. Uh, but uh, we got really high hopes for Tate, and he wanted to get this done, so he was back healthy for spring ball. So um, looking forward to the future with him. Andy Candy. Hey, Scott. Um, Having the disappointing finish against Minnesota, how did the guys bounce back this week um, in terms of preparation for Rutgers? And how have they dealt with uh, one of their guys on the offensive line deciding to move on and opting out? The guys have come to work every day and done everything we've asked them to do. Um, I don't think we're alone. I, the guys are, I think, a little tired. Uh, this has been a, a long year. Um, a lot of our guys got back in March, April, just not being able to ever go home, not being able to, to do a lot of things around town. I think I think guys are a little bit tired, but um, they're excited to play, prepared really well. Um, so our guys love the fact that they're getting to play football. Um, you know, uh, Jaime meant a lot to us. Haven't seen much of a change in practice. Turner's done a really good job all week and, and other guys at that position. So uh, haven't really noticed a difference there. All right, Sean Callahan uh, has one on the game. And then, Sean, if you want to go ahead and move on to signing day with your second question. OK, I had one on the game. Coach, uh, what do you tell your your team right now? Like the guys that aren't traveling, are, are they just free to go on? Or are you keeping guys kind of around just because of the unknowns of what's next? Yeah, I think uh, we're going to try to keep them around until we know everything for sure. Um, we, I, I just don't know enough to to know much past uh, Friday. Um, that's assuming we get there and everything goes well. Um, we'll have to make those decisions then. So uh, we're playing things by ear, just kind of like we have all year. What has Bill Moose told you about the bowl game process with the Big Ten and the ADs? I mean, because I'm, I'm sure there are some schools that have said, you know what, we're not going to go no matter what. I mean, did they, did they talk about that? Do you know as, as far as trying to slot these things? Because it's going to move pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm not on those calls. Um, Talk to Bill a little bit about it. Um, there's a chance we'd have an opportunity to go play if we decide that's what the players want to do. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of schools that are deciding not to. Um, I'm not sure that's all COVID reasons. It's just been a trying year for a lot of people. So, uh, again, we'll, we'll we'll address all those things after the game. All right, and then on the signing day class, uh, I know the fans probably like the drama and the hoopla of signing day, but I'm sure the coaches probably enjoy a drama-free day. What did you think of the day itself as far as just how it went for you guys and how this class came together? Uh, I'm really impressed with the work our staff did, uh, considering uh, you know the fact that we couldn't go on the rec road recruiting, we couldn't get kids to come in here. Um, I think we signed a really good class, a lot of pieces that are going to fit together with what we have. Uh, and I think it's going to be the key to getting us over the top. Uh, we just got to continue to add add talent and uh, feel like this group did that. I think it's a little more of a regional class. You know, we've got five kids out of Nebraska again, a lot from the Midwest. Um, you know, that I, I, 
I think there's good talent in the state right now, and, and we're trying to get as much of that as we can. There's good talent in the region and um, some really good pieces from a little farther away too. So uh, considering uh, everything that was going on with a COVID year, uh, I'm really excited about this group. Caleb Henry, KLIN. Coach, uh, with all the different ways you had to recruit this year, sorry, um, what did your staff learn about itself not being able to get out in person and, and get the guys to, to campus? What did we learn about ourselves? Uh, I don't know. We learned how to use Zoom better. Um, you know, it, w one of the biggest selling points of coming to Nebraska, if you're a player, especially from far away, is coming and seeing the games and seeing the fans and meeting the people and experiencing all that. Um, the guys had to work hard to get it done without the benefit of those things. And um, the group that we have coming in are great kids. Uh, I think there's really talented people in this group, and they're already pretty tight. They're on a, a group chat, and, and I think all these guys know each other really well and know some of the players on our team really well. So um, our staff had to, just like a lot of staffs, I'm sure, had to, had to find new ways to get it done and different ways to get it done and um, certainly feel good about where we are. Kevin Suits. Coach, you have one quarterback in this class. He's an in-state guy in Heinrich Harburg. Uh, when you evaluate him, how much is he maybe above some of the other quarterbacks that have come through this state over the past uh, 10, 15 years? Uh, been impressed with him since the first time I watched him. I uh, love his size, love his arm strength, um, his overall athletic ability. Uh, I think with, with some training, he has a chance to be really good, really good quarterback for us. So we got to add him to that group and uh, get to work with him. And, it, you know, he's from right near my, my hometown. So we used to play Kearney Catholic all the time back then. I, we used to beat him up pretty good. I think they're getting the best of it now. Uh, a lot of that has to do with him. But really like talking to him. Um, he's really uh, committed to being good and, uh, and determined. And uh, I think he's got a, a ton of raw material to work with to make him a good player. Evan Bland, World Herald. Hey, Scott, I'm just curious, how much did the circumstances around the pandemic, first of all, limit the, the pool of prospects you as coaches went after? And then conversely, did you get the sense that uh, the, the recruiting limitations maybe helped simplify the process for some of the guys that you ended up signing? It might have simplified it a little bit. Uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about that, but um, you know, we still worked really hard to identify as many people as we could that thought could play here. Um, you know, we're going to offer quite a few guys and and try to recruit quite a few guys. Anybody that w we think is a, a above the line and and some of these can make our program better. Um, you know, that number probably got whittled down faster this year than normal. Uh, a lot of kids saying if they can't ever get here and see it, it you know, it, that's just a hard sell uh, for some kids, but. The relationships with our coaches uh, gets us the type of kids that we want to get, and we were able to foster those relationships uh, even without having seen some of these kids ever in person. So, um, again, kudos to the coaching staff. They worked hard to get this done. Compared to maybe some other classes, how well do you feel like you guys know this group of prospects coming in? Um, I still feel like I know them all really well, but there's several I've never been in the same room with. You know, I've never seen in person. Um, there's been probably more phone calls this year, more FaceTimes, more chats, those types of things than maybe even other years, probably for sure more than other years. So you get to know somebody, but um, without home visits and official visits and unofficial visits, um, there's a few that I've never met before. So um, looking forward to working with this group, though. Back to Parker Gabriel. Scott, I know you don't. You guys don't like to really push guys on whether they're going to come early or not. But it seems like a big group, maybe a dozen or so of these of this class, is going to. Um, what does that do for them? And do you think that the pandemic maybe affected that decision for some of those kids too? It might have. You know, uh, the way high schools are right now in COVID, I might be ready to get out of there too. I don't know. Uh, I think some of them spring sports were a question mark and. Prom was probably a question mark, and uh, they're probably tired of half days in school and those types of things. Um, but there's just more and more of that happening, too. 
Um, you know, kids are kids are ready to take the next step and move on. I think kids that do early enroll uh, get a chance to go through spring ball, get accustomed to college, get accustomed to the team, and that gives them a better opportunity probably to play early um, than if they showed up in June or July. So I think we got 13 uh, coming in early, and, and that's a good number. It's going to help our, our depth and our talent talent pool in the spring. Mitch Sherman. Hey, Scott, um, I'm sure you're ready to be done with Zoom for a while, but are, are there some things that you guys picked up as a staff um, this year, um, you know, with technology, whether it's virtual visits or any anything else that was that, that you know, where you communicated differently that can help you in the future in a, in a normal recruiting cycle? I think definitely uh, got to give a lot of credit to the recruiting staff, um, Dylan and Callahan and Mossbrucker. Also, a lot of credit to Ora Garst. Uh, does a lot of our social media stuff, a lot of the videos that people watch. Um, helped us out with some of the virtual visits and those types of things. And I, I think there is a use for some of that going forward. Uh, ideally, we still get a lot more kids to Lincoln. I think that's that gives us our best chance when kids come see it for themselves. But um, this has probably made us work a little harder to find find ways to share with kids what Lincoln's like and what Nebraska's like without getting them here. I've got a question, too, about the tight ends. Um, the decision to go with three in this group, um, and then specifically uh, on Fedoni, just what you see for for his potential um, as a weapon in this offense down the road. Yeah, uh, there's three guys. Um, you know, you never know where guys are going to end up position wise, but um, at, at the tight end spot, you know, we've only recruited a couple since I've been at Nebraska. Um, those guys are, aren't in the program anymore for a couple different reasons. So we really um, are veteran at that spot. Um, you know, Jack's a senior and Austin and uh, Raftall and Tyler are all juniors. Uh, and we don't really have anybody on scholarship younger than that. So it, it's a position we had to restock. I love the group we have. All three guys are big, talented athletes. Um, Thomas specifically is his. Uh, probably has as much potential as about anybody I've recruited. Um, when you watch his tape and and look at his frame and his speed and and just the uh, talent that he has, so we're anxious to get to work with him. And I think he's going to be uh, um, probably versatile enough. We can do quite a few things with him. Sam McEwen, you, uh, hey Scott, you, uh, obviously you never want to. Uh, overhype a player or overhype their importance. Um, but what do you think of the quality of the players on your offensive and defensive lines? So I think you've got two defensive ends at this moment. Maybe you guys will add more later. And I think you have three offensive linemen. They're all huge people. Um, what do you think about the way that you guys are recruiting in terms of the frame there and then the quality of the players that you got? Yeah. Um, the quality of Sam, the quality of players we have right now. Or the ones in the, the recruits, recruits the quality of the player that of the five recruits. Oh, um, well, I can talk about all of them specifically. Um, you know, Teddy's a kid from right here in state. Um, he's got a huge frame. Um, you know, I, I think once we get to work with him and once he he's he's really improved, uh, I think, through high school. But somebody with that kind of size and athletic ability has uh, a ton of potential. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, Branson uh, Jaeger from Utah, he's a, a huge human being too, but also a really good athlete. Um, and then uh, Henry, uh, since I've been recruiting one of my favorite guys to talk to, he's just 100% committed to football. Uh, he moves really well for his size. You know, we're in a league with big guys, and um, I think right when our staff got here, we didn't think we were uh, big enough to hold up against some of the huge people we were playing every week. Uh, so we made a real effort to get those guys. But we, we can't just take big guys either. These three kids are really good athletes. And um, I, with, uh, with training, I think they can be exceptional players. Um, the, the two D linemen, Jalen Weavers, uh, a kid that Tony worked hard to recruit. Uh, man, he's, he's huge and he can really move. Uh, he's violent. Um, so we're excited. 
uh, about him. And uh, Ruquan Buckley is one of the few that got to campus before COVID hit. Um, I developed a really special relationship with him. I think he developed a special relationship with this place. Uh, we had to fight off a lot of people at the end to get him to sign. Um, but he's uh, just a great person and a uh, big, great athlete too. So um, that, that being said, you know, I, I always giggle that Coach Osborne never said anything about anybody other than I think he can be a pretty good player. And um, that's probably all I really need to say because, you know, you don't want to hype people too much. They got to come earn it. And uh, but um, feel really good about what we have on the team at those spots right now and the addition of these these kids that I think can be really good. Thanks. Andy Kendi. Hey, Scott, um, listening to um, some of the kids in the interviews today earlier, um, it was obvious that they want to be a part of turning this program around. Is that a common theme when talking to these guys that, yeah, maybe they could go to a, a, a team that's currently in the top 10, but they really want to be a part of the foundation of turning this Nebraska program around? Um, I think there's some of that motivation. Honestly, we talked to him about it a little, but I think that's kind of grown uh, within just this recruiting group. And and they're talking about it, maybe talking about it with some of our young players that are just as determined and committed to get that done. Um, we're going to get that done. This group is certainly going to help. And um, man, I, Nebraska people are going to go nuts once that happens, and they're going to love these kids for it. So uh, it can be a lot of fun. Hey, Scott, I want to ask you, too, about um, an eight-man player in uh, Seth Malcolm, a unique talent. Um, does it show that you're willing to take a kid, no matter what level of football he plays, and, and give him a chance to prove himself if he's, if he's got that potential? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a history of a lot of eight-man players playing and doing well here, and, you know, including my father. Um, Seth's just a really good athlete. And, you know, I don't care what level of football you play at. Uh, an athlete's an athlete, and um, linebacker's position where we needed to add talent and depth, and um, we liked him from the first time we watched his tape. Um, got a great kid from a great family, so uh, six-man, eight-man, 12-man, 11-man, I don't really care, and uh, Seth's going to be a good addition. Thank you. Andrew, Andrew Ward, KLKN. Hey, Scott, you mentioned the in-state kids. Um, you got five of them this year. Just what excites you about that group? Oh, uh, well, first and foremost, when you're from Nebraska and you come play at Nebraska, you know, you, you just bleed scarlet and cream. Um, I think those kids are going to care a lot and, and do whatever they have to do to, to be great here and to help the team win. Um, you know, I'm really excited about Kobe Bretz. Kobe's a, a kid we didn't offer right away, and watching him his senior year, I thought he was as, about as good as any uh, – football player or safety we looked at. Um, his size and athletic ability, I think, give him a chance to be really good. Uh, we already talked about um, Harburg uh, and Teddy. Um, A.J. Rollins is a, a kid with a, just huge upside and untapped potential um, with his size and athletic ability. Um, and then James Carney, uh, again, another kid we didn't offer right away, but watching his senior year, man, he runs so well for a guy his size, uh, has great hands, um, was a position of need for us. And um, that, that's a really good group to get from right here in the state. Uh, hope Nebraska keeps producing talent like this. And, it, and if there's a kid we think is good enough, we want him here. Brian Christofferson. Scott, I jumped on a little late, so sorry if you're asked this, but with your wide receivers and tight ends kind of combined receiver-wise, what, what do you like about just, you know, the, the talent you have and size-wise and what you've added with that, with your receiving options? Yeah, uh, you talked about the O-line and D-line probably need to be, we, we focused on trying to get them bigger in recruiting. Um, you know, there's some schools in our, in our league right now with, you know, 350, 400 pound guys playing, playing on the offensive line. And um, that doesn't mean that a, a smaller guy can't do it, but I think we needed to be bigger. A uh, receiver is another position where um, we'll take a special athlete no matter what his size. Uh, we've certainly had and have some that aren't real big that are exceptional players. 
Uh, but this group of receivers is going to give us some length, some catch radius, some physicality, and they're all really twitchy athletes too. I'm really excited about uh, the receiver group. We've talked about the tight ends, but uh, Latrell and I have really uh, bonded. Uh, he, he's a, a great kid to talk to. Uh, he and I have several acquaintances, uh, kids that I've coached from down in Houston, Braylon Addison and Josh Huff, uh, being a couple of them that, that know him and uh, talk to him about their experience with our staff, with Coach Lubick and I. Um, he's still playing, and, and I think he has a chance to be special. Uh, Camonte Grimes is a kid uh, that, man, a, just a twitchy, big, exceptional athlete. Uh, basketball player, great track and field marks, um, huge upside. Um, super excited about him. And then Sean Hardy, uh, when you talk to him, uh, he's uh, not just a great athlete and football player. He's, he's a brilliant kid. Um, so I was talking to him about his homework the other day, and he was trying to explain something to me that I didn't understand. So uh, it's good to have that type of kids in the program. And, um, you know, we, we feel great about this receiver group and where we're going with that, with that position. What do you like about uh, Gabe Irvin as, as your guy at running back? Uh, he can do everything that we need a, a running back to do. Um, I think he, he's big enough to run physical. He's fast enough to potentially give us some more big plays. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. Um, his senior tape was really good. Um, and, you know, his junior tape was really good, but his senior tape um, I was super impressed with. and. Um, you know, we get, we got uh, some young running backs in the in the room right now. He's going to fit in great with those. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch that competition. But but Gabe's the guy that uh, I look forward to coaching. Thank you. Thank you. Got time for uh, three or four more quick ones, Parker Gabriel. Scott, not to fully just go down the list of all the guys you've got, but I'm curious with a guy like Randolph. He's been in the class for a long time. I'm sure he had plenty of other options. What do you like about him? And without a guy who is maybe a true off the edge, you know, a six five linebacker or something like that. Or a couple of those guys in your linebacker group, guys that could could play inside or outside down the line. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about this line linebacker group. I think all of them can probably play inside or outside linebacker for us. Randy's super twitchy. Uh, man, when you watch him, he covers ground fast. He strikes on the move. Um, he's violent. Uh, but Seth and him and all the other linebackers, uh, Makai, all the other linebackers that we recruited, uh, I think are going to be capable of, of playing multiple positions for us. Um, and, and that's going to be valuable and help them get on the field faster. Evan Bland. Scott, this, this class just broadly wasn't able to take official visits, to go to any of those summer events, things like that. Um, how unique do you think it is the way this class came together kind of organically meeting on their own? And then what effect did their peer recruiting with other guys, uh, what, what effect did that have on how the class turned out? I think it kept them together. You know, somebody asked me about a drama free signing day. Um, you know, we expected to sign this group of kids. They all signed, they all signed this morning. I called them all and told them congratulations. Um, I think their uh, their bond and, and talking to each other and their determination to to turn Nebraska into a, a winner um, probably held the class together really well and made our jobs easy. And I hope they continue to make our jobs easy. Mitch Sherman. Hey, on the numbers, um, are you thinking you'll look to add anybody here between now and February, and and then? Overall, on numbers, just like bigger picture um, recruiting, I mean, senior decisions coming up, upticks nationally and with the portal, you know, how much of a challenge is, does this offseason pre present for you um, in terms of roster management and just having everything right? Yeah, I think a lot of schools are um, having more challenges this year with roster man management than normal. Um, it's kind of a moving target right now. We, we got to see uh, – exactly what the rules are, how many of our seniors are coming back, uh, if they decide to come back or not, uh, how many spots we're going to end up with, how many spots under the 85. Um, I do expect to, to add at least one, probably more than that, before February. And uh, we always like to keep a spot or two in our back pocket in case a, a special player uh, turns up. 
that uh, that we might be able to get to add to the team at a position of need. So um, love the group we have. I, I don't expect that we're done. And finish up back to Sam McEwen. <clears throat> Hey, Scott, I'd like to give you an opportunity to talk about the walk-on class, specifically Alex Bullock out of Creighton Prep. Yeah, um, you know, with, with each walk-on class, there's several in each group that I fully expect by the time they leave Nebraska that they're going to earn playing time, maybe be starters, and, and probably earn scholarships. Um, Alex is certainly one of those guys. I think he's one of the best players in the state this year. I think he could play multiple positions. Um, we're lucky to, to get that kind of talent. Uh, I know those guys are going to come in with a little bit of chip on their shoulder and also be motivated uh, to help us win, but they're going to compete. And um, there's a lot of talent in this group of walk-ons, so if those guys come in with that attitude, uh, we're going to give them every opportunity that everybody else has to, to earn playing time. And if they do, uh, we're going to take care of them financially. I had one more question about the running back position. I, when I look back at the running backs that you had both at Oregon and UCF, not only were they good, they, a lot of them were good right away, uh, very, very quickly in their careers. What, what do you think has been elusive at Nebraska, with the exception of Maurice, who isn't here anymore, uh, at that position? And how do you get it fixed in, in a short period of time between now and the start of next season? Well, this year, Sam, I think uh, several of those young guys would have had a chance to make a lot bigger impact. It was a little bit like the re the receiver room that, you know, Savion was hurt and then came back and then got COVID and had another injury and um, Marvin kind of the same thing. Um, had a couple nicks and dings here and there, missed the Purdue game because of a false positive. Um, w when you have that kind of stuff going on, it's just hard to give the guys the reps they need to develop on time. You know, and it, and this was just such a weird year too. You know, a couple of those guys, young guys uh, enrolled early, but then get, didn't get spring ball. And uh, because of COVID restrictions, we couldn't spend much time with them as coaches this summer uh, to help teach them. We had to do things on Zoom. Uh, then fall camp was broken and we didn't get pads on. And then when you had an injury here and there and some other missed time, and it's just, it's hard to bring those guys along from a development standpoint. Um, with a full off season, I got no doubt that uh, a lot of these young players, particularly running back, can be ready.